going on guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of Tariq Radio. I am your gracious host. My name is Tariq Nasheed. I'm glad to have y'all in here tonight. It's going to be a fun ride tonight, guys. I need y'all to hit that thumbs up button, hit that like button, and hit that subscribe button, ladies and gentlemen. Let everybody know that we're in the building tonight. We're doing the show early this week because we're going to be in Atlanta doing the Foundation of Black American Conference, so we're getting it in early. So let everybody know that we're live right now. We're going to take a real quick commercial break. You know how we do. But we'll be right back. Right here on Tariq Radio, so don't move a muscle. Yo, you still ain't getting women? Really? Come on, son. You need to go to badboymembership.com and step up your game. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Locario, the bad boy of the dating game, and I'm telling you that if you really want to attract beautiful women, you need to go to badboymembership.com. This is where you get 45 through 90 minute step-by-step dating advice tutorials every month. Just sign up, follow the advice, and you'll get the woman you want. Go to badboymembership.com. That's badboymembership.com. Listen up, family. Black Empowerment is the new cool, and On Code Clothing is the brand to choose. If you are already on code, stay there. If you're not on code, get there. Go to OnCodeClothing.com and check them out. On Code Clothing is not for everybody. That's a black-owned, everything and exclusive company. You gotta be in tune to appreciate this thing of ours. So get on code at OnCodeClothing.com. Use the discount code Tariq Radio at the checkout to save for a limited time only. Is your hair lacking moisture and shine or missing its bounce? Girl, let me tell you about Something Natural Hair's Deep Moisture Collection. They have six different products for naturally curly hair. They have the Deep Moisture Shampoo and Conditioner that leaves your curls non-oily, moisturized, and weightless. The Hair Moisturizer provides you with ultimate moisture for dry hair. The Defining Curl Foam controls fizz and has a medium to light hold to lock in moisture. The Curly Custard is good for sealing in moisture and it adds shine to your natural hair. The Hair and Body Butter, which is an all-around moisturizer, helps to nourish your skin and hair. To purchase your natural hair products, you should visit somethingnaturalhaircollection.com. Aliens discover melanin. They notice the people. They exploit the people. Why are you doing this to me? Because I enjoy it and because I can. What type of payment do you want? Do you see me? I have the best. I want the best. And I deserve the best. The new drug. Audio novel. You can find on YouTube. At the Urban Gods. Spelled with a Z. Channel on YouTube. Premiere October 24th. Hey guys, check out a brand new ebook entitled I Have a New Dream. That's an inspirational ebook that introduces the concept of group economics to black youth in America. See, the sooner our children are exposed to material like this, the more likely it becomes a part of their mindset and their lifestyle. So play your role in nurturing the builder spirit in our young by downloading your copy today at IHaveAnewDream.org. That's IHaveAnewDream.org. Check out a brand new company called DurXWipes.com. That's a family-owned disinfectant wipe company that offers natural and quality wipes that clean at a professional level. They're shipping out of Minnesota and they make their products by hand and they deliver them efficiently. And they're now serving several variations, peppermint oil, lavender oil, lemon oil, eucalyptus wipes, you name it. So order from them at DerXWipes.com. That's D E R X Wipes.com and follow them on Instagram at DerXWipes. Yo, guys, are you looking for a constructive gift for a friend, family member, loved one, or anybody? You need to check out Justice.PearlSync.com. Now, that's an FBA owned company and they sell beautiful, high quality sets of notebooks that includes an impressive gift box. So, you need to check them out right now at justice.pearlsync.com. That's justice.p-e-a-r-l-s-y-n-c.com. The year is 2079. The futuristic nation of New Albion has been created to maintain a new racial apartheid system. There is a planned genocide that is going to target the nation's black population. A small group of black revolutionaries band together 
to launch guerrilla warfare attacks against their oppressors. Do they fail or do they succeed? Find out the answer by reading the book Avoid the Machines, the new novel by author Scotty Vasco. Avoid the Machines, now available on Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. You are now tuning into the legendary Tariq Nasheed. I gave him the blood on that bridge in Selma. On Tariq Radio. I said, whoever you that paper, your mom's a hoe. Yo, we're back, guys. We're back. We're back. I told y'all it wasn't going to be too long. Oh, man, we're here. We're back. Glad to have y'all tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. Family, don't forget the foundational Black American Conference is going down this weekend in Atlanta at the Georgia World Congress Center. Man, we're so excited. It's going to be a packed house. We're going to have a great time. We're going to be practicing social distancing and, um, you know, everybody will have the mask on. We'll have the Santa, the sanitary products there, the um, hand wipes. So it's going to be a very safe environment. And it's going to be a clean environment. People are going to be cleaning up behind everybody. It's going to be a real cool, safe event. Safety is going to be very important. And getting the message across, that's going to be important too. You know, the the venue required us to do a lot of stuff. We had to hire uh, some medical people to be there. You know, a whole bunch of stuff. But we didn't mind taking care of all those things to make sure everybody's going to be safe and good. And it's going to be a great event. Get your tickets. We got some VIP, and we have some prime seating tickets available now. We we just put some up today because we got to be very careful with the numbers. There's going to be limited numbers getting in. There is going to be a cutoff point because of the spacing of the chairs because we're doing the, we got to space the chairs like three to six feet away. So it's going to be very interesting. We're going to sit people kind of in groups. So it, it, the seating is going to be a little limited so you're going to want to have to get your tickets now so that you can be sure to get in because we're going to cut some of the people off if they do not have their tickets after a certain volume of people get in we're going to have to start shutting it down when we reach capacity so again go to fbac 2020 Dot com to get your general tickets, to get your prime seating tickets, and get your VIP tickets and access. The, the VIP people, you're going to get a gift bag. Not only will you get prime, you're going to get VIP seating, not prime seating. You're going to get right up there, very close in the front. Um, you will have backstage wristbands, and you will get a gift bag. So those that's going to be for the VIP people. So again, FBAC2020.com ladies and gentlemen a lot of stuff we got to get into a lot of stuff we got to get into guys first thing i want to know uh, did y'all hear the brianna taylor situation our sister brianna taylor her family they just got a huge settlement out there in kentucky you know they had benjamin crump on the case so they got a a landmark settlement because y'all know crump is a a settlement lawyer, and I don't mind the settlements as long as people focus on punishing the race soldiers. That's my thing. Now, from what I understand, I didn't see anybody from Breonna Taylor's family running around doing all that forgiving. I, I did not see that. And usually that's Trump, uh, Crump's, Benjamin Crump's, that's his M- MO when he's dealing with clients. He gets them to go around talking about forgiving and all that so that people can be easy on the police so that he can get a big settlement. But I do not, and I did not hear about the family of Breonna Taylor. Well, the, the, one of the sisters, he had a sister who was kind of bucking her eyes a little bit. I can't remember what she said exactly, but some months ago I saw her little sister was bucking her eyes and I forgot what it was about. But the mother came out and she said, hey, we still want criminal charges. So I salute her, you know, but they got 12 million of them things. And the mom still said, you know, we want justice. We still want criminal charges against the person who did it. And that's all I, I'm concerned about. If y'all want to get to hey, look, people need to be compensated. I get it. But you don't compensate people to the point of 
them compromising the race soldiers getting punished. Now, me personally, and this is me, I wouldn't want no money, man. My my children, my family, they're, well, they're not for sale. That's just me. You know, I, I think different. Yeah, I, I, I think different. I, I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want money for my family's lives. My family's lives is is priceless. With me, I, I'm I'm different. I would go find that damn race soldier, my damn self. That's what I would do. You know, you take my child, I take you. I, I believe in eye for an eye. I'm all about eye for an eye. I treat people just like they treat me. That's just me. You dig? But I digress. But what I don't like about this deal, this is what I don't like about it. They negotiated something where some of that money, and from what I heard, is going to be 500K. Some of the 500K of some of that $12 million settlement money is going to go to some damn police reform. That's the problem that I have. Family, we have to understand the term and the concept of police reform is the biggest trick bag con job ever. That is such a con game. Now, let's be very clear. With this settlement, it's the taxpayers paying this settlement. That $12 million comes from the taxpayers' money. The police, they don't really get hit with that. The police, get, they get off scot-free. And not only do they get off scot-free, they don't have to really pay anything from their budget. And they get an incentive with this dumbass police reform nonsense. And all this does is incentivize the race soldiers to kill more people. They're not going to get no real punishment. Police reform, it's supposed to be worded to sound like punishment, but it's not. You cannot reform race soldiers. There's no such thing as police reform when somebody does a crime. You don't reform them. If somebody go robs a liquor store, you don't reform him you put him in jail you punish him but the lunatics are running the asylum right now and this is the thing we got to stop being afraid of that we got to stop being afraid of that we got to stop being scared to say what's going on out here these race soldiers are dangerous and they're targeting us and they're playing this game of white supremacy denial. Denying white supremacy is white supremacy. But with this police reform thing, all you do is basically try, you give them money to take classes on how not to be racist. That's all police reform is. All that fake ass sensitivity training, that's, the, that's a waste of time. Black people, please, please, Please don't sign off on that. Don't ever sign off on fake police reform. Don't go along with that. If somebody comes around black people talking about police reform, get them out of the room. Get them out of the room. There's no such thing as police reform. You're not going to pay somebody to teach them to not be racist. If you're not punishing these people, you're wasting time. The only thing that's going to stop them systematically, we're going to go through the system, is punishment. You see? And now, some people are starting to take this thing to the streets. Now, as we know, somebody in Compton ambushed a couple of cops out there and the white supremacists are just crying foul all they're mad as hell because they don't want black folks to start making those kind of moves not only are the white supremacists mad i see a lot of foreign coons who are copping please right now i'm seeing a lot of folks talking about oh, that, 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 that's not the answer now i'm looking at a lot of foreign flags saying that and black people you don't have to be paraded around to repudiate the, the shooting that happened in Compton, that's another thing. When something happens and they say the suspect is black and nobody knows who the suspect is, they start parading niggas around to 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 apologize and to repudiate it. Hey, well, how come you're not speaking out against that? It ain't got shit to do with me. I need to know all the facts. I'm not repudiating nothing. I don't know anything about it. I don't know who did it 
And whatever it's about, it ain't got nothing to do with me. Y'all don't let these white supremacists and these anti-black racists punk you and scare you into talking about a shooting you ain't got shit to do with. You ain't got nothing to do with that. They're trying to make that comparative to police shootings. No, police are being paid by our tax dollars. So we have a say so about how they go out here killing people. We're not using our tax dollars to fund race soldiers. So we have a say so. If somebody wants to go and shoot cops, whatever, that ain't got shit to do with me or you or anybody and y'all stop apologizing and copping, please. Fuck that, that ain't your job. That ain't your damn job. And we don't know who did that shooting in Compton. It could have been a boogaloo boy. Nobody even knows who the suspect is. Could have been a white supremacist in one of them, them black masks they be wearing. We don't know. And what's interesting, the, the little anti-black white Hispanic Alex Villanueva, Nueva, I think that's his name, Villanueva, he's the, the chief sheriff out here at the sheriff's department. He's a little anti-black racist. He, his ass got, he got to get out of here. They got to get his ass out of office. He's a, an extreme anti-black racist. His department over there, the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, family, that department has decades and decades and decades long anti-black racism. They are known, they've been having white supremacist gangs Within the police department, they've been having this since 1971. They had a white supremacist gang called the Vikings. They go out here and protect Aryan Nation skinheads. They go out here and do targeted ambush killings of black people. Several whistleblowers have come out and, and admitted this under oath, saying that there are these different white supremacist gangs within that department there. You understand? So a lot of the good cops are telling on the bad cops within that jurisdiction. And let me say this, any officer or anybody who joins the L.A. Sheriff's Department, knowing their history, knowing that they have white supremacist groups within that department and you're not telling on them, that makes you complicit. You're a part of that evil, corrupt, unjust system. You're a part of it and you're complicit in it. If you know that this organization that you are joining, they're not upholding the Constitution like they're supposed to, you are complicit in tyranny. Because, see, when things start happening to these folks, they, they want to individualize them. Well, this person was a mother, this person had kids, this person had just joined the force, but they're a part of an evil system. See, if a black person does something and they throw a gang injunction on them, they don't care that the one gang member didn't do anything and that he didn't, he didn't participate. But he's a part of the gang, so he's complicit. Just like with Bobby Smurda. Bobby Smurda's in prison now. Bobby Smurda didn't commit any crimes. He's in jail because of the clique he ran with. They implicated him in the crimes that his clique did. Bobby Smurda didn't do anything, but they made him guilty by association. We, we do the same thing with race soldiers. You're not going to individualize them. They're guilty by association too. And that police chief... Alex Villanueva, this is an anti-black racist and he has the blood of his own deputies on his hands because he allows these white supremacist groups to fester in that department. And notice that he arbitrarily took a shot at LeBron James. He came out talking about, yeah, we got $100,000 for any information on the killer and LeBron James should, should match that. And people are looking like, why the fuck did you mention LeBron James? What does LeBron James have, do, have to do with any of this? A lot of people are starting to call him out on that because again, that's that anti-black by proxy thing. They're going to get a, a well-known black celebrity who speaks about police violence and try to make him complicit and make LeBron a proxy for all black people. And another reason why, let me tell y'all the real reason why he chose LeBron James. And this is what I told y'all a few weeks ago about this scared talk. Because remember, LeBron James was out here talking about how scared he was. I'm scared the police are doing this and I'm scared. And I told y'all 
about that damn scare talk. Don't talk that scare talk dealing with these white supremacists. They look at that as a form of weakness. So when LeBron was out here talking about how scared he is, oh, the, one of the biggest, most respected Negroes is scared, so let me go after him. That's how these white supremacists think. That's how they think. Let, let us go after him. He's already let us know he's scared and he's not gonna really verbally fight back so we can go and attack the big Negro and he'll be our proxy. That's what I told last, a couple of weeks ago, I told y'all that scared talk, that ain't it right there. That is not it whatsoever because the streets ain't scared. Like I said the other day on my broadcast, when the officers got shot out there in Compton, they got shot in broad daylight. And then that night, people went down to the hospital where the police were and they were trying to get in the emergency room. So that had a lot of people shook, like, damn, these niggas ain't scared? No. The streets are not scared at all. This is why it would behoove them to just produce justice. Don't come playing those games out here on the streets. They know how niggas get down. And the sheriff's department, they are fanning flames and they are instigating these situations that cost taxpayers so much money. If you look at what's going on, not just in LA, but around the country, all of this goddamn havoc that's going on, billions of dollars being thrown out of the window because of these stupid ass goddamn police departments with all these fucking race soldiers. They're just messing everything up. Everything is instigated by them. The Breonna Taylor situation, the George Floyd situation, riots all over the damn country because of these goddamn white supremacist race soldiers in law enforcement. They are the common damn denominator. And out here in LA, and I done told y'all how niggas got down, niggas ain't gonna be protesting too fucking much out here. That's just how the, the vibe is. Niggas ain't trying to walk around with no signs and all that begging for no fucking justice. Niggas are gonna go ahead and handle that shit on their own. And they need to chill and get these race soldiers in line before civilians in the dominant society get hurt. You don't need people hurt indiscriminately because of the actions of some dumbass race soldiers who are insecure and want to damage the reputation of what law enforcement is supposed to be about. So they, they need to get that shit in the bud. And all of you white supremacists egging these people on, you got blood on your hands too. Because, boy, they made a real big deal about that Compton shooting because they, they were able to, to stir up some racial fear. Because let's be very clear. We don't know. They, they said the suspect is black and it, was, it happened in Compton. They feel that it's a retaliation for them shooting the brother um, Dijon Kizzy a few weeks ago, which it, it could possibly be that. So they don't want that to become a thing. That's why they're hypersensitive about that. They're focusing on that. Because they know there's a possibility if that type of mentality spread where black folks say, hey, you know what? The system ain't working for us and my feet hurt from protesting. So let me go ahead and give y'all some of this same energy. They know if that happens, it's going to be a problem. So they got to really jump on that right away. Because let's be clear. In the last, hell, it ain't even been a week. In the last like four or five days, do you know about three or, other, about three or four other white men have shot police officers around the country? In the last four days, out there in New Mexico, uh, a white man shot a female cop. I think out there in Virginia, a white man killed a, a, a white cop. I mean, all over the place. Um, in Tulsa, this white boy shot two cops and killed one. And that whole fake Blue Lives Matter crowd, they ain't saying nothing about that because they don't give a shit about no cop. They don't give a damn about no police. I've told you guys a million times. They could give a damn about a police officer. The only thing they care about is anti-black racism and using a police death to a police officer's death to facilitate their anti-black racism. If they can't fa facilitate anti-black racism, they don't give a damn about no cop. All that fake, oh, we love our boys in blue. That's phony, 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 phony. The only thing they love about that is them being able to harm black people. They could give less than a damn about cops. But this is what I want people to do. See, this is why we got to get on the hashtag game and, and get on code. 
I want people to start using the hashtag all blue lives matter. So we got to learn how to play both sides of the argument like they do. I want y'all to start using all blue lives matter. That includes white cops who've been shot by white people or any cop that's been shot by a white person. Use the hashtag all blue lives matter and post stories of white people shooting cops all over the country. We're going to do that just like we did first then. See, we've neutralized Me Too. Me Too was using Me Too to demonize black people. And we neutralized that with first then by flooding the zone with case after case of white people, white males, doing all of this raping and molesting while they keep circling around to the same four or five black people, hey, every single day there's a plethora of white men out here raping and molesting and it goes unpunished. But use all Blue Lives Matter and post stories of these white men out here shooting cops almost every damn day that the alt-right crowd and all these people, they don't like to talk about because they can't racialize it. We're going to put that on the forefront. So if there's a black person who happens to do a shooting, whatever, they can't say anything about it until they prioritize all the white people doing it. See, that's how we neutralize that. All blue lives matter. See, just like they try to slip in agendas with all black lives matter, talking about trans. No, all blue lives matter. Play both sides of the fence. Now, today's broadcast we're talking about our brother andrew gillum i need everybody to hit the thumbs up button hit the thumbs up button hit the like button hit the subscribe button if you have not subscribed hit the like button guys andrew gillum ladies and gentlemen if you do not know andrew gillum as you know he was he got caught up in bussy gate some weeks ago he was up in a hotel room with some some big strong men's he was in there with some some strong white men's <laughs> getting delivered, and uh, um, he's been doing a lot of bussy splaining. First, he tried to do a lot of lying, talking about he was drinking too much. And I said, if y'all remember a few weeks ago, I said, look, I said, look, Gillum needs to stop all this. And I guess somebody over at the Democratic Party they must have been listening because I said. The only way Gillum can get back in and get back on top of his game, he's going to have to own this shit. He's going to have to come on out the closet. I said that a few weeks ago. I said, look, he's going to have to go Marion Barry style. See, Marion Barry got caught up in the scandal, but the thing is Marion Barry kept it real pimping with his scandal. When they caught him in the hotel room with the crack pipe, he wasn't in denial. He's like, yeah, I got some crack, but the bitch set me up. Ain't that some shit? Why did this bitch set me up? Yeah, I smoke crack. Ain't nothing wrong with crack. The bitch set me up, though. He kept that thing a, a buck. And people respected that. He wasn't like, that ain't my crack pipe. I don't know what you know. No, 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 no. Mary and Barry kept it a buck. We can fuck with that. Just you, you fucked up, you keep it a buck. So Gillum is out here trying to lie, hustle, weasel his way around. No, nigga, we, we know what's up. We, we saw what went, went down in the hotel. We saw you throwing that ass in a circle. <laughs> Bro, we, we saw what we saw, Gillum. Let's let's not play games. I said, Gillum is going to have to come on out. Gillum is going to have to come on out and say, hey, man, I got a hankering for the bussy. I, I just like it. I dip, I dip and dab a little bit. That's what I do. He's going to have to come out. And family, that's exactly what he did. Somebody must have heard what I said, and he came on out, and they're going to reinvent Gillum. Gillum is going to be reinvented, guys. And let me play the clip of him talking about now he he said that he's coming out and he identifies as bisexual. Listen to this. Okay, hold wait, where we at? Where we at? Okay, hold on one second. Come on, give me. Um, you put it out there. Hold on, where we at? Here we go. Hold on, let me get my volume together. Here we go. Honest with you, when you didn't ask the question, um, you put it out there is whether or not I identify as gay. And the answer is I don't identify as gay, but I do identify as bisexual. And that is something that I have never shared publicly before. Honest with you, when you didn't ask the question. And okay, now he said, well, 
I identify as bisexual because now, see, he has to say that because he has, he's been using his wife as his beard. That's been his beard. OK, he has to say that because he, you got to justify, you know, using if you say, yeah, I'm gay, then they're going to be like, OK, why are you using your wife? That's going to look bad. That's going to look bad. So you got to say, well, I, I'm bisexual. OK. And. If you look at the picture, if you look at the screen right now, he came all the way out. He got on a little makeup. He got on some some magenta um, 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 lipstick. He got on lipstick. This The picture that you're watching, guys, is not altered at all. It's not altered. He got on a little Maybelline Rouge. He got on some little Fenty eyeshadow. He done, he done dolled up a little bit. He came on out. Now he he ain't trying to talk masculine no more. So now he's living his truth. He's he's coming on out. He got a lisp. He's talking regular now, like he always does behind the scenes. And let me play some more. Some uh, another part of the interview with Tamron Hall. Let, let's hear what he has to say. Bisexuality in and of itself doesn't lead to unfaithfulness. There are men who are in marriages with women who just because they're married to a woman doesn't mean they're no longer attracted to other women and at any point in time can slip up make a mistake do something and that is you know what it is the same thing in bisexual relationships you can be attracted to both you, you got a bigger t terrain out there that you have to contend with but you can still choose to physically be with one person that's a choice that all of us in our marriages and in committed relationships have to deal with your thoughts on okay, that, Okay, so he said, hey, he's, yeah. he's, he's bussy explaining, but he's, hey, he's living his truth. He's living his truth. <laughs> My dude is living his truth. And listen, listen, they're about to reinvent Andrew Gillum He's going to be the first LGBT this, the first black LGBT candidate for this, the first, the first open black LG. Oh, they're about to milk this. They're going to really, really flip this and milk it and run with it. They're going to flip it and they're going to reinvent him. That's why they got him out here in makeup now. Now he's talking with a lisp. They got him in makeup. He's talking with a lisp. That nigga's going to come out with some booty shorts and some flip-flops with fur on it. He's going to be flaming. He's going to come out looking like Billy Porter pretty soon. And let me say this. I bet he's going to possibly, him and that wife, they're going to split up. Because now he ain't got to hide no more. So now it's all out in the open. He don't need to use the wife as a beard. And everybody, when you, when you saw him and the wife, you can see the chemistry was off. You saw the chemistry was a little bit off. And plus... She's, eh, I'm not. She's not a bad looking woman, but you know, she had just kind of had a little weird look to herself. She kind of looks like Birdine White from Earth, Wind, and Fire in the face, but she's not a bad looking woman. Just kind of had a weird looking vibe with her with her shit. But we knew something was off there. We knew something was off. So he doesn't need his beard no more. So now he's gonna let it all hang out. He's going to be a black LGBT icon. So now we got to watch Gillum because now he might try to funnel in a whole bunch of other shit now. So we got to watch Gillum. But with Gillum, you know, this is a coming out party for Gillum. You know, we in this is a coming out party and we got to celebrate for Gillum with that Wob, Let, let's get it, Pop. Let's get a little celebration. Hold on, one second. Let's let's bust a rhyme. Booty hole in this house. Booty hole in this, this for house. Gillum. Booty holes in this house. Booty hole in this, this house. Booty hole in 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 this house. Booty spreading them butt house. cheeks booty in the hotel in room, house. getting bussy juice on seats. That nigga got a wide ass bussy. That's what WAP is. Wide ass bussy. Andrew Gillum got a wide ass bussy. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, sorry. All right, all right, all right. I'm, I'm done being petty. Let me stop being petty. <laughs> All right, I'm done being goddamn petty, but yeah, 
Uh-huh. Yeah, he got a wide ass bussy right now, and he's about to spread it all over the place. This nigga's about to show out, man. But more power to Gillum for for living his truth. And speaking of Cardi B, y'all know Cardi B is getting divorced. They said her and Offset they're getting divorced, and um, you know that's interesting. Some people are like, oh, is it a, pub- a publicity stunt? We don't know. I don't know if it's a publicity stunt or not. But they said that um, she's getting divorced, and that's interesting because in that in that wet ass pussy song, she says, "I don't cook and I don't clean, but I still got that ring." Well, shit, you ain't about to have that ring no more. See that song, that was like a hood rat anthem. I don't cook, I don't clean, but I got that ring. See, that's a fantasy for hood rats, where hood rats think they can just live trifling and a, a motherfucker is gonna still wipe them up. No, <laughs> it don't work like that. You ain't got no homemaking skills, whatever. The only thing you got is wet ass pussy. Wet ass pussy dries up after a while, so we're gonna need something to eat and we're gonna need some of these clothes folded or something. <laughs> Yo, wet ass pussy ain't gonna get all the the. Spider webs out the corner. Damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hood rats, don't let no damn Cardi B pump your head up with ratchet fantasies that you're going to really get it popping with a real nigga being a trifling bum broad. That's bum broad shit. <laughs> Walking around. If you look at Instagram, you got a lot of wet ass pussy with box springs on the floor. These old dusty mirror chicks twerking with funky clothes in the corner and Carl's Jr. bags all on the floor. Nobody wants that long term. The hell you want to lay up with that with for? Come on now. Y'all don't let these folks trick you with these damn songs. But, you know, let me, I haven't done that in a while. Let's take a couple of calls. I want to take a couple of calls. I haven't taken calls in a minute since we're doing a special early show on Tuesday. Let me give y'all the phone number. The phone number is 818 850-5404. Plus, I want to test my new phone lines to see how they are working. But give me a call right now. Let's let's get a couple of calls from the listeners. 818-850-5404. Let's let's get somebody in here. Got somebody here now. One second. Let me turn this up. What's up? Who's calling? This is Kenny out of Los Angeles. Hey, Kenny, how you doing, fam? What's going on with you? I'm all right, man. And um, I'm calling to let you know, man, we appreciate everything that you're doing. And I will be at that conference. I ordered a sweater. I need that sweater, man. I got to show you the receipt when I get there. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. So, yeah, yeah. Who who you bringing with you down there, man? It's just me, man. I tried to get somebody to fly. I'm flying from L.A., so I tried to get somebody, but it's just me. No doubt, man. So we'll see you there this weekend, man. You be good. All right, let's see. Oh, shit. Well, what's up? Who's calling? Yo. Yo. What's up? Who's calling? What's up, bro? It's X. What's up, X? What's, what city are you in, bro? Yeah, I'm in Charlotte, man. What's good? Sean, what's up? What's on your mind? Nothing, man. You know, I just wanted to say, man, I appreciate what you do, man. And you got me over here dying with you. <laughs> Andrew Gillum, <laughs> wet ass, bussy. <laughs> Boy, these pink, you should live. <laughs> That's crazy. That nigga got on some damn cover girl on their ass. He coming all the way out. He ain't <laughs> fucking around. I said oh my, <laughs> my God, that nigga is a city girl right now, man. Let that nigga live. <laughs> all right, man. Ooh, Thank, thanks for the call, bro. Man, we can shout out to Gillup, man. That nigga's living his truth. What's up? Who's calling? Hi, um, my name is Christine from Western Jersey. Hey, Christine, how are you, dear? I'm good. How are you? I am good. You sound like one of them girls who got big breasts and no ass. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> well, is that how you look? You sound yeah. like you got... Is that how you shaped? Really? <laughs> oh, God. Okay, well, anyway. Oh, go ahead. Um, I, I was calling... Uh, so, I wanted to come to the to the conference. Okay. But, I, you know, this whole corona situation is... I, I already bought my ticket like a, like a year ago, whenever. Okay. But... Uh, are you gonna are you gonna broadcast it? Because I don't think I can get down to the to the ATL because I got older folk not too far from me. I'm afraid of the corona because I know somebody's gonna be coughing and sneezing and they're still gonna show up because they don't want to miss it. And I just can't take no chances. Uh, yeah, I, I would say come on down and bring your mask. We're gonna have people in there with the mask and the sanitizer because we're not gonna stream it. Because I, from what I understand, the reception there in the venue was kind of janky. 
But again, we're going to film it for later. But I would like to you, you come on down, man. Come on down and enjoy the festivities. Just wear your mask and, and put some sanitizer on and all that shit. And you'll be good to go. Mm-hmm. I'll see what else can do. All right, dear. Thank you so much. All right. She sounds like a sweetheart. All right, let's see who else is going. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, what's going on, Flex? What's up, man? Who is this? Oh, this is uh, DJ from Nashville, man. Hey, man, uh, I bought my ticket, man. I bought VIP, so I'm going to see you Saturday, man. No, no doubt, and bro. I, Who you bringing with you? Uh, I'm bringing nobody because I didn't ask nobody because I completely forgot to buy my ticket until just recently. <laughs> oh, damn. Okay. So, I was, yeah, I was kind of, yeah, kind of got school work and everything, so I've kind of been a little busy and everything. That's cool. And, uh, you know, being sidetracked. But what I really wanted to ask you was uh, I've been trying to get in uh, – you know, put the information out there. And I see people like Ida Rodriguez, you know, that comedian. She's doing the Young Turks. And I know she'd be having some guests on and that's real, real and thorough. Okay. So I was wondering if you could, like, you know, spread the word to other folks, you know, other viewers to, like, you know, talk to Ida Rodriguez and get her to talk to the Young Turks to get Dr. Claude Anderson on the show. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I, I have to look into that. I'll check her out. I, I'm not too familiar with her work, but I'll check her out. I see what's up, man. But thanks for the call. Um, let me see. What's up. And by the way, all my Atlanta folks, let me let, hold on one second. Let me put my man on mute for a second. My Atlanta people, um, email me. I need a barber down there. Any, I need a barber in Atlanta. And who does twists? I'm probably going to do some shit with my hair. Um, I need a barber down there. And who does twist braids out there in Atlanta? Hit me up. Email me, info at TariqElite.com. If you're in Atlanta, you know some folks. Or if you're somebody in Atlanta who gets down, info at TariqElite.com, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get this call. What's the Hello? Hello? Hey. Hello. What's hey. up? What's up, brother? Can you hear me? What's yeah? I can, yeah, brother, I hear you. Are you at a waterfall right now, brother? Where are you? <laughs> I'm at work right now, man. This is Jay from the Bay. How you been? Yeah, what's up, Jay from the Bay? How you doing, man? My nigga, All right, man. nigga, where you work at? The uh, an, an ice center, nigga. You got some damn nah, illegal nah. immigrants you trying to rustle up? What? Are you, all that noise in the back, brother? <laughs> Oh, I'm at the port, man. I went to the port, man. I got a lot of noise in the back. God damn. Bad, All right, brother. Yeah. I... Don't get fired out there, Jay, from the Bay. I'm good, man. No, no, no. I'm, I'm all right. I'm just, I'm just like you telling you. Uh, you sound like you, you, you sound like you trafficking drugs, man. You better not be sneaking across the border with a brick. <laughs> no, no, All no, right. No. Oh. All, right, All right, Jay, let me get some other calls, yeah. Jay. Thank you, brother. Wait, wait, let me, wait, hold on, hold on. God damn, Jay takes forever. What's up? Who's calling? I'm trying to get a lot of calls here. What's up? Who's calling? What's up? This is this is Jay from Long Island, New York, by the, by the way of New Jersey. Oh, nigga, brother, you breathing real hard and it's making me uncomfortable. What you in there doing, brother? I'm here at work. God damn, nigga, do you work at a male strip club, nigga? What what kind of work you do? Hell nah. And, nigga, you you having yeah, trouble? You, you, you having right? trouble putting your thong on, nigga? Why are you breathing so hard? Nah, first time call, long time listener. All right, brother. What, what, where you work at, man? I work at a condo. Okay, you work at a condo or you're working on a condom? What, which which one is it, nigga? No, work you, at a condo. Okay, sound like you're putting on a condom or something. I don't know. You're scaring me. But what's on <laughs> nah, your bro. what's on your mind, man? Not much. Just want to say I appreciate everything you do, man. I, and and that's the foundation on conference is actually on my birthday. Oh, cool, man. That's cool. You coming on down? I'm working on it, man. All right, come on down, man. I'm not gonna shake your hand because I don't know what you got in your your palm. But I, I, but I would love to have you come on down to the venue. Bro. <laughs> Wear a mask and some fucking gloves, brother, if you come down and introduce yourself. Because I don't know what you're doing with your fingers right, right now. <laughs> All right, but thanks for the call, bro. Let's see who else is going on here. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, what's going on? This is McConnell out of Atlanta. What's up, brother? How you doing, McConnell? What's going on with your fam? I'm pretty good. How about yourself? I'm good. What's on your mind? Hey, I was calling uh, just to let you know, um, I like it for you to really beat the drum on us being indigenous to the Americas. Yes. Because, um, you know, you people don't really fight for something if they don't know it's theirs. 
So, you know, we know that we're here and we were here before anybody else. Real talk. And, brother, we, I'm a, I'm a, we're going to break that down heavy at the conference. I'm glad you said that, bro. We're going to go deep on that. We're going to hit y'all with some real heavy information about our indigenous status that we don't know about. We're going to get real deep as far as that because that is something that we don't realize. We don't realize that we are the indigenous people here, not just mixed with the 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 Africanness. Yeah, that's true, but we are also um, – the aboriginal people here we were already here people who look just like right. us were already on this land for thousands of years and the white supremacists came and just started renaming folks negro and black and indio and all of these other names that confused us so we're gonna break that down heavy exactly and i have one more thing like i vow to my family if one of these race soldiers or anybody white killed with somebody in my family i'm going hunting yeah me too so, you know me too make- yeah, no doubt. I feel you, brother, but thank you for the call. Yeah. I mean, I have a good one. Man, look, I say that shit publicly. Shit, my family get harmed. I, ain't no Benjamin Crump for me. I I say that shit openly. You harm my family, you're going to get the same type of energy. Fuck that. You harm my family, we're doing the same thing to you and yours. No fear. If I have to go, you ain't threatening me with all, I ain't scared of none of that shit. That's just what it's going to be. That it, Then it's my time to go. I've lived a great fucking life. That's why you live life to the fullest. You don't let people sit up here and kill your fucking kids. And then you sitting up here with Benjamin Crump. He got butter biscuits dripping down his fucking mouth. Fuck that. I wouldn't disrespect my kids by sitting up with some shit like that. Nah. Race soldiers, whoever do that to my family, you got to go too. It's that simple. Let's see who else is on the phone. A lot of folks calling right, thanks, all right, brother. He's still on the line. All right, what's up, brother? Who's calling? Who's this? What's up with you, bro? This is Jay out of North Jersey. What's up, Jay? What's going on with you, fam? Slow boogie, bro. Did you see that contract that um, Q broke for Black Americans? Yeah, I heard about it. It's, it's basically a lot of stuff that we've been talking. My, I've read some of it, but a lot of it is a, a lot of things, a lot of bullet points that we pointed out and talked about. So, but he actually has it in a written format to where he could present it to candidates. Yeah, but they know. The candidates know what the hell we want. They know. Let me look. We we think black folks think we just haven't presented something to them correctly. We gotta put it in a in writing and then we gotta put it on a wall and then we gotta put a bow around it, then we gotta go file it downtown, and then we gotta go to SeaWorld and file it and then go to a ship and file it on the ocean because the ocean is the international waters. Then we gotta go to the um, the UN to file. We we are we're told we got to jump through all these damn hoops. You don't, you know, because all of these other groups who are not even citizens, they get offers and they get tangibles and they ain't got to file shit. They just wake up and say, hey, we're going to give illegal immigrants these type of tangibles, this type of money, and they get it. So we just have to but be those on, people. Go ahead. Those people were never really mistreated. Like we were the ones who were mistreated in America and we have to make a case. If we want reparations, we have to Black and white, in black and white, make a case for all the mis- all the mistreatment that we've uh, gotten in America, and also you know how they can recompensate us for that mistreatment, just like what Cube did in his um, his contract for Black America. Yeah, well, we've been talking about that for the longest. Doctor Claude Anderson has been talking about that, talking about specific treaties. There are treaties now. Do you understand? There's treaties right now that says that black folks are supposed to get money. The problem is they just don't be enforced. They can put all types of paperwork out there, but the white supremacists won't enforce it if nobody's making them enforce it. See, we have to make them enforce certain things. You understand and that? How, is, how are we going to make them enforce it? You, if, you put it in black and white. If they won't enforce it, if it's in black and white, how else can we make them enforce it? Uh, they don't. Let me tell you something. The white supremacists don't give a shit about no paperwork. They don't give a shit about no law. They only care about so what... So it's a, it's, a it's a lost cause then, right? It's, not, it's a lost no, cause. Just give no, up. No, no, no. That's you talking. That, that's failure talk. No. What you do, but you according, force According them to what to. you're saying, they don't give a fuck. They ain't, they're not going to do shit. Whether it's in black and white, they got treaties already that they won't enforce. So how the hell are we going to make them enforce shit? Did you hear the second part I said? You have to make them. Do you understand that? I said you have to make them do it. Now, how do you make them do how? it? How do you That's make the them do how? it? Now, I'm trying to tell That's you. That's what I'm asking. How? But you won't stop talking, brother. Why are you so hostile when I'm trying to tell you what to do? What's the Now, this hostility sounds like something else. What's that about? 
I'm listening to you, bro. No, what's this hostility? I'm trying to tell you and you. How, man? Goddamn. Fuck that. How we going to do? How? What's that about? There's something else going on. What's that about? Where's that coming from? What's that about? It's about me just listening to what you got to say, bro. Okay, well, you need to listen to what I have to say, brother, and calm down and listen. This ain't, we're supposed to be on the same page. Do you understand? Yep. Okay. You force them by doing what we're doing now. We're letting one of their parties fail. We're destroying the Democratic Party right now. We're destroying the left wing of white supremacy right now just by us simply being on code and not fucking with them. These people are being destroyed by us ignoring their asses. We're getting on code. Neely Fuller says the only thing that's missing with us is a code. When we start doing things on code, we can move the needle. And now, if we destroy the Democratic Party, we can use our leverage to let other folks know we can make you or we can break you. So if you want to be made, let's put some tangibles on the table or you're going to go by the wayside like we just did those raggedy ass Democrats. You see how that works, brother? Yeah, I see how it works, but I don't see how like once the Democrats lose and once uh, Donald Trump is selected for another four years, Mm -hmm. he what he what he does indirectly helps black people because of the immigration thing. He's, you know, trying to help out with immigration that indirectly helps black people because even, you know, down in Mississippi, they got chicken plants and shit where they got illegal immigrants working and they had to raise the ice raided the fucking plants. Right. But I was watching Telemundo the other day and I saw uh, Joe Biden and um, the Hispanic community. He was talking to the Hispanic community and they was all wearing uh, abolished ice shirts. Right. So it's, it's almost as if that's what they're going to vote for if they win. You know, they're talking about abolishing ICE, making the country uh, gender neutral. I understand. Yeah, I know. And I know. I know all that stuff. I know. See, the thing is, a lot. So of, I, I, a lot of people. I'm sorry, go ahead. A lot of people want to do some shit like overnight. Let's just do something real, something quick overnight that we can do in one election cycle and be done, so we can go back to bullshitting. No, we're changing our mindset where we're going to have the same mentality of codification every single day see that's the thing we need to be on code every day being on code is going to be a lifestyle at this point see they like to get us to just run out here file some paperwork or go vote for one day or go do some little one-off so we can go back fucking around doing dumb shit we can't do dumb shit no more it's time to get on code and be on code every single day and change all of the way we get down. We're going to change the way we get down with other groups. We're going to change the way we look at politicians. It's going to be all about tangibles if they want to step to us. And we got time. It's going to be a time-taking process. But that's what being on code is about. They didn't build white supremacy overnight. It's not going to be dismantled overnight. It's going to take a process of us staying on code. That makes sense? So we we should all be dis disassociating ourselves with the Black Lives Matter movement then, right? What, but what is Black Lives Matter? What is that? Uh, a, a lesbian run uh, organization funded by George Soros. And, and most, this, and most, and, and most, years right. And, but, and, they don't give a fuck about the community. And most they people on the streets. Money, all this money being raised, what the hell are they doing with it? Most people on the streets don't know anything about those women and they're not out there for no damn Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter is a code word that the white supremacists use to try to make black people complicit. Let me explain what Black Lives Matter is. That's just some codified speaking. The white supremacists get on code. They use Black Lives Matter to make all black people complicit with the actions of each other. That's just a code term. If uh, there are white people out here that they they, they, use it to destroy our community, man. There white there's white people who they call people getting excited about statues being taken down. Nobody give a fuck about no damn statue. Give give some tangibles out. Uh, arrest these fucking cops. I don't give a fuck about a statue. Yeah, but that ain't. A, but Black Lives Matter again. That's just white people, the white supremacists, calling anything Black Lives Matter because they're that's their way of falsely accusing black people of shit. It's a code word. It's a code term that basically justifies their anti-black racism. So that's just them being on code. We have to stay on code by referring to their asses as white supremacists and white supremacist suspects. So we have to make all of them complicit in the actions of each other and not make them lone wolves. Them using 
using the term Black Lives Matter for every little thing that somebody does in the streets. That's them saying all black people are complicit and we need to punish them as a group. I look at white supremacists I'm not even the talking same about them way. Using the term Black Lives Matter, man. I'm talking about the organization itself. The organization is inconsequential. They ain't nobody. Nobody gives a fuck about them people. No, they they so have we no stop way. Supporting them. No, who supports them? Who supports them, bro? When you see them out here with their protests, you see all of these black people out here that are really, that's, that's the people I feel sorry for, man. The people that are really Nobody supporting really that change. organization. That really, Nobody on the streets. It's a, you, not, you don't get out here in the streets much, brother. I'm out here. Ain't nobody in the streets giving a fuck about that organization. That's just some shit that the media says. Stop believing everything that the media says. Most people on the streets, if you show them a picture of the peop, them three women from Black Lives Matter, they wouldn't even know who they are. Nobody's in the streets because of them. They're in the streets because of Bro, anti-black I racism. I wasn't even expecting it. I was in Mississippi not too long ago, and downtown in the capital, they had a, a Black Lives Matter rally, and they was out there all dancing and shit. That's the LBGT shit. The, the white liberals will send some folks out there to get in front of the cameras and do all that buck dancing and cooning, but the folks out there putting in real work on them streets ain't got shit to do with the organization Black Lives Matter. Exactly. All right. That's anyway, thank you, brother. Thank and you, brother. We, thank we you, should... brother. Thank you, brother. This brother's all over the place. God damn. Okay. Yeah, this brother's all over the place. Uh, what, what's that? Who's calling? With the organization Black Lives Matter. Exactly. All right. Anyway, thank you, okay. Hello? Thank you, Okay, let me get somebody else. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this brother was all over the place. What's up, man? This is Glow, man. What's up, brother? How you doing, brother? What's on your mind? Man, I just wanted to let you know, Tyreek, man. I've been sitting back and I've been watching in my city because I was actually laid off due to COVID, man. And I just wanted to say, man, something is up with this COVID thing because the actual fact that I was laid off for COVID and can't get no job or can't get no PUA money right now, but I can, um, you can't get that and the job centers is closed, man. What's going on with that? Wow. Man? Wow. Wow. Yeah. It's getting real heavy. out like, here. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's all bad everywhere. It's tension in the air. I just want to say much love, man. I listen to you every trip, but it's something up with this COVID thing. Like the liquor stores is open in my, in my community and people be packed at the club, everything. They're not policing people like that where I'm from. Mm. But at the same time, why is all these government institutes that's supposed to help people like the job centers and stuff that's supposed to give you your benefits, they're not open. But the liquor store open every day. Yeah. Yeah, man. They they understand how this thing will affect us. And this is why they start talking about how well, black people are disproportionately um, prone to COVID. And that's because we're disproportionately prone to economic deprivation and we can't get the right health care hmm. that we need. So that's why certain things affect us this way. And this is why we have to be all about getting tangible so that we can have our own businesses like the liquor store. That liquor store is owned by one of these foreigners that they give tangibles exactly. to. So when there's an ep- epidemic, they'll still be in business. See, this is why having a business is important and we have to be all about our Fact. damn tangible so that we can maintain during these little pandemics and things like that. You understand? Facts. Facts. Very mm-hmm. much facts. No doubt. But anyway, thanks for the call, bro. Let me get some more folks in here before hey, it gets man, too late. Hey, man, thanks. DYT, shout out, man. No doubt. Shout out from Dayton, Ohio, man. Much yep. respect. All right. What's up? Who's calling? Let me get a few more calls in here. What's up? Who's calling? Yo. Turn down. Turn down. Yeah, this is Kevin Warden Price. Hey, Kevin, how are you, brother? I'm good. Can you hear me good? Yes, sir. I can hear you. What city are you in, Kevin? I'm in uh, Los Angeles, Africa Town. Oh, hey, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, this is the brother right here, guys. This is the brother who went to the that emergency room when those those officers were up there. Brother... Now, this is the brother. He's down in South Central L.A. Um, I heard that they've been sending y'all a lot of death threats. Man, what's been what's what was the aftermath? Well, first of all, let's go back. What happened the night okay. of the, the thing when uh, the person when the shooting happened in Compton? What happened that night? Well, well, first off, let me just say I am glad to be able to talk to someone black because I said I wasn't going to talk to anybody that till I could talk to a black person that was out here in the media. So I just want to put that out there first. Much respect. Now, what happened was. Uh, Saturday, uh, Saturday evening, uh, early Saturday evening, I got a call that said the two, uh, sheriff deputies had been shot, 
um, at the Compton, you know, train station. So I was like, wow, you know, let me make some calls and stuff because uh, we got to respond to that. So, you know, as we were putting our plans together, you know, one of our uh, team members said, hey, why don't we go to the hospital instead of going to the uh, uh, train station? Because that's probably where they're going to be. So, you know, being Africa town, you know, we have to do the dynamic thing. So we rolled down to uh, it was four of us, you know, four Africa town members. We rolled down to St. Francis Hospital. And uh, when we walked up, uh, there was a, a, a Mexican brother that was there. He, you've probably seen some of his um, um, recording, but yeah. we walked up and we uh, walked down. The, um, we attempted to walk down the pathway of the hospital and we were blocked by the security. So after having a little tussle with security, you know, just bumping chest, that's all that was. Yeah. And we decided, you know, it was women, so we weren't going to push up on them because they had the women in our face. So as we moved back, uh, away from the security, that was just no police. It was just security. Then the uh, sheriff started coming down as we delivered our message. And our intent to go out there that day was to let them know that South Central is happy of the fact that these two sheriff deputies, these two potential white, supr- I mean, not uh, white supremacists, sorry, because one was a Mexican, leader, but these uh, potential uh, executioner gang members and sheriffs, uh, that was probably, you know, one of so we wanted to just deliver the message that right. we were happy that this had happened. And at South Central, you know, this is a place where Linwood, Compton, you got like a lot of things that surrounding where this hospital was. And it's trying to say that, well, this is not something that, you know, blacks would normally say. But no, there's a lot of black people out here that really don't care about uh, whether they lived or died. So as this thing progressed, what happened was one officer, as you can see, one sheriff deputy, he came down with, it looked like a flip. They said it was a tear gas gun, canister gun. Yeah. And so he, he was antagonizing me because he kept pointing it at me. And he had also had pointed it in my face and he would never lower it. So, you know, I basically told him how I felt, you know, I wish that that officer would, you know, the officer, I don't know if I should say it on your, should I say it on your channel? You can say what you, yeah, yeah, you can say it. What you said? Okay, yeah. well, I told him basically that uh, we came out here to deliver the message that we want, We was happy to see that the officer got shot in the head and we wished that they would die. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, this is the feeling, you know, because there was too much blood that has been shared on the streets of South Central and all over America. But Africatown Coalition has responded to about maybe more than 20 death scenes where police have mm-hmm. murdered black people just in South Central alone. Yeah. So for them to think that, you know, it's unusual for us to want to come out and, you know, bang on them the way we did, you know, that was really ridiculous. So as uh, more uh, gangbanging sheriffs came from the hospital, uh, we continued, you know, banging on them, saying what we had to say, exercising our First Amendment right, because that's right. what that was about. Then they started to say, oh, were you blocking the, uh, the driveway? Right. Okay, well, we actually looked down, seen where we were, and adjusted our position. You can see that in the video. You know, and so we were conscious of where we were standing because we didn't want to be pushed upon like that. But we were they were in their feelings. And that was our intention was to get them in their feelings, because how many times have you seen the mothers, daughters and children of these black men and sometimes women and sometimes children crying? Okay, crying after their loved one has been murdered, you know, like Dijon Kizzy. You know what I'm saying? That was just totally unnecessary. And they murdered that brother. They gunned that brother down. Didn't know he had a gun. They gunned that brother down. You know, so uh, we were feeling a certain way, yeah. And then we go out to the sheriff's station, and you have all these white people out there. You know what I'm saying? And then they try to call us Black Lives Matter. Well, we are not Black Lives Matter. Right. They tried to call us Antifa. We are not Antifa. We are black men who are fed up with the murder of our people, and we're about to get in their face uh, even more. Let, them, let people know about the corruption with the Los Angeles Sheriff Department and how deep it is. Well, you know, we, we've been uh, somewhat covering uh, Compton. Compton is a very difficult thing. But we have a case. Uh, his name is uh, uh, King Solomon. And King Solomon responded to uh, a situation that took place on, was that Alondra in Central? It was a beauty parlor where a Korean beauty parlor owner had assaulted a sister. Right. And so uh, we responded. Uh, what happened was the, the, the Compton Sheriff, you know, gangbangers, you know, Sheriff gangbangers showed up, beat this brother, you know, uh, tasered him for about eight minutes uh, and then attacked a couple of other people. Now he's incarcerated um, and he's still trying to get out. So that's just one case. OK. Uh, you know. Yes. Yeah, How long they go? They got because I remember that situation. I remember that it was a, it was like a, almost a mini riot out there in that parking lot out there in Compton. I remember that. 
Um, and that, yeah, that beauty su- yeah, that beauty that beauty supply store was shut down for a minute. I don't know if they opened back up or not, but I know they shut it down. It's for black a owned now. Oh, it's, oh, okay. So yeah, it's they got owned. okay. Oh, so they got them on up out of there. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Good. Black good. Owned. Good. Yeah. So yeah, I want to get some. And, and so. Hmm? I want to get some information on the brother who's locked up, too. I want to see what's going on with his case, so I want to look into that. But go ahead, brother. I have all the information, so if we get your contact, I can send it all to you. No doubt. Because no I'm doubt. in contact with his mother. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. Cool. So basically, uh, as you can see, they pushed us back, and then uh, what I decided was, you can see when I raised my hand, because I knew that it was going down, because, you know, you could just see the anger in their eyes, you know, the, the pain in their eyes, you know, and so to me, that was just like, uh, that it, it, like I said, it uplifted my spirit, you know, because I had dealt with too much of that pain out in those streets, yeah. you know, and so it drove me kind of away from the streets, you know, and then to see that happening that day, I mean, you know, that was like worth it all. So basically what happened was uh, when they pushed us back, then they began to get physical as more uh, gangbanging sheriffs showed up. They began to get more physical, and then you can see they start pushing us. And then one uh, officer, he grabs me and he slings me. And that's when I started saying, this is the America that we live in today. And then he pushed me. And then shortly after that, uh, they tackled me. But uh, right about that time, you had the, the, the reporter uh Josie and I don't know how to pronounce her last name. You're the Asian Young, lady, I yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Asian lady. So she was right there and I didn't really know everything that was happening because I was going down and you know, they dog piled me, put their knee on my neck, you know, pounced on me a little bit, you know. And uh then uh by the time I got up they had her also secured. But what's the interesting thing too is that when I was sitting in the police car uh, I guess I was dealing with some rookies because they left the uh the 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 walk you know the walkie talkie on there. Yeah. The radio was still playing. And uh, they tried to say that we were Antifa in the beginning. Oh, wow. You know, because I heard them. I was like, wow, Antifa. So I couldn't wait to clown them, right? Because I clowned them from the beginning to the end, you know. And then when I got to the police station, they started asking me about, uh, did I get assaulted by the cops? Well, yeah, y'all dog found me. You know what happened. So then they took me to Martin Luther King. I got an x-ray. And then they brought me back. They saw that I had bruises on my neck and, you know, my shoulder going down my arm. And so when I got back to the... uh, to the police station at uh, Central, I think it's Central right there. Yeah. In, in Watts, what happened was um, uh, I heard the Asian woman, the reporter, in the police station. And so she was like, you know, standing her ground, doing her thing, you yeah. know. And so we were too far away for me to say anything to her. Uh, and so at that time, they told me that, uh, you know, they were going to release me uh, once they uh, processed me because they charged me with. Uh, um, I'm sorry, I don't have that paper. But they charged me with some ridiculous Ooh. shit about um, um, unlawful assembly. Okay, some old made-up uh, made yeah. bullshit, yeah, yeah. Right, and then so they gave me another interview about use of force, and so I explained even more about what they did, and um, then they took pictures of the bruises and stuff for the second time. Um, and uh, I sat in the cell for about two hours. They let me go at 4.30 in the morning. Now, what's really like petty, let me show you how petty these people are. Uh, what's well, petty is that um, um, I have a medallion, an African medallion. Yeah. They actually sat there while I was in the cell and defaced it, peeled it all out and destroyed it. I'm yeah. still wearing it, though, because, uh, you know, it's just a spirit of it. You know, uh, yeah. a Black Panther, you know, gave me this, you know, so I'm going to continue to wear it. Mm-hmm. And then they took my car key, right, and they bent it, you know, like, so I couldn't get back in my car. You know, wow. they probably figured my car was around on the scene, you know, but uh, it just didn't happen that way. You know, so uh, they released me, and uh, I came back home, went to Africa Town, uh, talked to some people, you know, and uh, now we have a lot of death threats going. You know, we got some white supremacists all the way in South Carolina, you know, they talking about what would you, how would you feel if you woke up and I'm climbing through your window and I got a knife to your family member's throat? You know, this is this is the type of shit that they're saying because... Black folk don't give a fuck about the police. Mm. Okay, so they're threatening. Oh, they, they make, these threats are hot. Mm. They're hot and heavy right now. I but imagine. I just told them, I said, hey, you know what? You can come down to South Central if you want to. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we, we're on alert right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're on alert right now. Yeah. yeah after, if we wasn't on alert before, we're on alert right now. Yeah, after our after Ki- yeah. brother Kizzy, after um, Dijon Kizzy got killed, man, I saw the vibe. I went down there over in the Hoover's neighborhood and I saw the vibe. 
and I went over there on Imperial. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh man, this yeah, the you can oh, yeah. feel it. You can feel the tension and you you can feel the energy. And the energy was like, okay, I know some shit is gonna go down sooner or later. So, you know, man, man Look, man, black folk black folk in the hood ready to take this they, they're ready to take their streets back man mm. you know we have too much of this black Lives matter white folks out there telling black folk what to do marching through black folks neighborhood late into the night like they live there that's a security threat you know what i'm saying yeah. because now we don't know who the enemy is anymore yeah. so all you guys say is black Lives ladder and people kind of give you a pass you know yeah. so that yeah. that is that's a security threat for the, for the for the hood and we need to correct that you, you know, we need to take control of whatever's going on out there, and we shouldn't let no white people speak for us, period. And if you're not ready to run up there and take a bullet, you need to get the hell up out of the hood. Mm, real talk. But <clears throat> where can people find your social media, brother? Well, we are on, uh, uh, we are Africatown LA mm -hmm. on Twitter. We are, we love Africa. no, excuse me. We are Africatown on uh, Instagram. We are uh, Africatown Group on Facebook. We also have a, a website, which is africatownenterprise.com, which is our website. And I think I said Twitter already, it's yeah. uh, Africatown LA. Right. Cool. And I'm about to set up a GoFundMe. I don't know if it's supposed for me to say, but yeah, I'm yeah, about to set yeah. up a GoFundMe because I'm about to have some legal funds. Okay, some legal some legal challenges right now and some other logistics. So I'm uh, about to set up a GoFundMe. It's gonna be out real soon. It's gonna be under my name, Kevin Warden Price. Uh, so any other GoFundMe under any other name and any other initiative doesn't represent me. The reason why I use my name is because I'm not hiding. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not hiding from nobody. You know what I'm saying? I want you to know who I am from beginning to end, you know? Real talk. Kevin Warden Price, Africa Town Coalition. My man, much respect to you, brother, man. And let us know when you're going to do the GoFundMe, man. We'll support it. And you be safe out here, brother, all right? Without a doubt. I just want to say much respect for your video series that you did, you know, uh, well, you know, we remember we used one of them uh, for our, uh, our empowerment sessions, you know. So, uh, yeah, that was very powerful, brother. And I just want to say once again, thank you for this opportunity because I didn't want to talk to nobody other than a black person who I understood, understand me. Absolutely. You understand what I'm saying? As a foundational black American. Much respect, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. Yes, thank you very much, brother. Man, to the man, black, black no family. doubt. Like I said, man, this shit is real out here, bro. Man, like I told y'all, man, it's real in the field out here. That's that's the vibe. That's the energy out here, man. Cats are, you know, cats ain't, they, they, people are tired of the bullshit right now. People are tired of the bullshit right now, man. So shit is very real out here. But um, yeah, shout out to that brother, man. Y'all go follow his social media and all that stuff. Should I get one more call? Let me get, these calls are interesting. See, I've been taking calls so long, man. We... We, we, we end up talking to some very good and interesting people, man. Let me see. We got another Atlanta call here. Let me see who this is. Hold on. Let me see who this is because we got a lot of folks calling. What's up? Who's calling? Hello? What's up, Tariq? What's up? Who's this? Can you hear me? I can hear you, brother. Oh, this is David from Atlanta. What's up, David from Atlanta? What's on your mind? Just um, the issue that uh, we keep thinking that this term... Black is going to get us somewhere when in actuality, the term black according to science means death. And in the eyes of law, it means we like legally, civilly dead. So we um, <clears throat> keep going out here cheering. Um, I'm, 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 I got to get some more calls. This brother's going to take a minute. Let's get to the point here. What's up? Who's calling? We, we got to get to the point. Sorry about that, brother. I had to cut you off. We got to get to the point. What's up? Who's calling? <laughs> this brother's about to start talking about some plebiscites. I, 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 hey, I, what's up? I heard some plebiscites hey, by the pop up. What's up? Who's calling? It's Daniel out of uh, Atlanta. What's up, Daniel? What's on your mind? Man, solid brother on that last call. Not the one you just hung up on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the kind of people we need, these soldiers on, out in the streets. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm just calling to let you know I'll be there. I'll be bringing my mother. She's a huge fan of yours. All hidden colors. Oh, all good. your all your radios. <laughs> Shout broadcast. out to mom. Shout out to mom. My mom is coming to my whole family is coming. My 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 good. sisters from Detroit. My all oh, my I got my whole family coming. We're gonna have a great time out there. So yeah, good. I can't I can't wait to glad meet to your hear. family. All right. Yeah, glad to hear. Um will you all be taking pictures? Like have a photo booth? I think we are. I think was was for some of the VIP people, I know we're we're gonna be doing that 
for for some of the VIP and some of the prime people. Um, but yeah, we're gonna try to do as much as we can, but we'll keep you guys posted on that. Let me get some more calls here, guys. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, what's going on, Flex? How are you? What's up, brother? What's your name? Hey, what's going on, Samir from out of Jersey? I just uh, just quick advice, real fast. I ain't gonna take up your time. Go ahead. Um, how would you approach uh, a family member and um, a mother that is using like you know white supremacist talking points, uh, black on black crime, um, you know why people out on the streets, and you know you know just 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 using a lot of uh, white talking points yeah. and with this with this particular situation that's going on in the country is 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 saying things that seemingly to be very white identified like how do you deal with that um when you watch shows like the walking dead walking dead that's a show that shows white people how to get on code and we got to look at that and learn how to get on code the same way certain folks are the walking dead once they become infected you can't bring them back they're just zombies at this point. We have to look at it like that. And when they get older, they get stuck in that coon mammy zombie mode. They start talking all that what about black on black crime because they've thrown in the towel when it comes to battling white supremacy. They just don't have it in them anymore. A lot of folks, black people, when they get older, a lot of them just say, hey, look, I can't fight no more. I'm just trying to relax, drink me a little wine, after work, I'm um, get my little retirement, you know, and and just eat me some barbecue sandwiches and just just be peaceful. I don't want not just, just a little good trouble, but not no big trouble. It's that John Lewis mentality, and you just gotta charge him to the game. That's your family. Hey, ma, I come visit you every every blue moon. But when it comes to building stuff, you gotta do you. You gotta go out here and find some younger folks who you can give the game to who can be the foot soldiers with you out here in the game we got to look at the youth it's very important to look and cultivate the youth we're so busy worrying about what some old ass negroes are doing and they've thrown in the towel and we waste a lot of time debating with these old niggas and they bait you into debating them because they ain't got shit else to do they just need somebody to give them some attention so they start talking dumb shit so you can battle back and forth with them we ain't got time for that get you some youngsters out here who's ready to roll drop some game on them so they can be the next generation of empowerment thank you for the call brother all right all right guys all right let me get up out of here because i got a pack you know actually i'm leaving tomorrow i'm actually leaving for atlanta tomorrow guys and again i need my barbers out there to hit me up my girls out there who do twist and all that in atlanta hit me up Hit me up, info at TarikElite.com. That is my email, info at TarikElite.com. Hit me up, hit me up, hit me up. Anyway, y'all, let me get up out of here. That's been today's episode of Tariq Radio. Whoops. That's been today's episode. Remember, go to um, FBAC2020.com FBAC2020.com to get your tickets for the Foundation of Black American Conference. As you see, it's going to be the biggest event for black folks in the country. Everybody's coming to this thing. It's going to be popping. FBAC2020.com, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all have a good evening, and I'm going to holla.